blessings to you. Y'all ready? Come on, put your hands together. Father, we come to glorify your name, to worship at your throne this morning. We declare that you are here in our midst this morning. Amen.
thank you, Lord, that you are able, above all the storms of life, that you are able, that you're worthy, Father. And regardless of our circumstances, that you remain faithful, our Father. So we declare that we are your sons and daughters this morning. And I'm no longer. God, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Child of God. 
Prodigals come home. Sons and daughters of the King. We declare your freedom. Spend your time in the world. Shout to the Lord. He's redeemed you. He has set you free from the law that brings sin and death. Ha, ha, ha. We've been liberated. Woo! It's because of that that we can proclaim that the splendor of the key is clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to.
to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice sing that again the splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice yeah. oh the light has every place in the darkness darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice it trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great
great Lord. You are great. Amen. Go ahead and grab a hand next to you. Greet somebody in the name of the Lord. Amen. Father's house. Good to see you here this morning. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Good morning. So good to have you in service. Well, this morning, there is a connection card in the seat in front of you, and we would love if you would take that out and you would fill it out for us. We would love to get some information from you if it's your first time here with us this morning. We would love it if you would fill out as much information as you feel comfortable with, and if you would do us a favor and mark that it was your first time, or maybe it's your second time here, or maybe you're just an old timer here and, you, and you're a covenant partner, would you mark that too? And uh, we would love to connect with you if you have any uh, prayer requests that you want to put down on there. We would love to pray with you. And if you uh, have any questions, just anything at all, if you would um, put that on the, on the back of your connection card. And we got a lot of good things going on around the Father's house. Wouldn't you agree? We got a lot of cool stuff going on. Don't forget that first Wednesday is this coming Wednesday, and we are going to have a special guest. Pastor Sam Hinn is going to be with us. We're going to have an extended time of worship as we normally do, just a great word. You're not going to want to miss this first Wednesday. It's at 7 o'clock here in the auditorium, and we would love it if you would come out. Now, remember life groups. How many of y'all are in a life group? In a life group or a life group leader, awesome. If you're not in a life group, make sure you get in one. Man, there is nothing better than to get into a small group to where you can connect, where you can um, do life together. God created us for relationships. And, you know, as the church gets bigger, we got to get smaller at the same time. And the way that we do that is we have small groups that we call life groups. So don't forget, it's, uh, it's not too late to sign up. You can sign up uh, for a life group. They start next week. Now, leadership training. Leadership training, this is something that we do quarterly, and it is on next Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. We do feed you, so, but we can't feed you if we don't know that you're coming. So take out that connection card, and if you're planning on attending, we need you to just flip it over, and on the back side, just put sign me up for leadership training, and that way you will be guaranteed that you'll get food for that night. But you won't want to miss it, because Pastor Terry, it's not just about necessarily being a leader in the church. It's about being a leader in the community, in your, your home, in, in your business, in your school, young people. Uh, Pastor Terry gives us lots of great tips and principles on how to be a leader in every single area of our life. Now, one of my favorite things that's coming up is Ice Cream Sunday. That's on September 17th. A great, great time. You know, we have Easter, which is a really big day for us. But um, our, what we like to call around here, kind of like a fall Easter, we have a lot of people who come and attend our Ice Cream Sunday. This year, we're doing it a little bit different. We're not just handing out... Um, ice cream bars or ice cream cones, you actually are going to get to be the creator of your own ice cream. 
this year. And there's going to be a Sunday bar out there with all kinds of different toppings that you're going to be able to make your own Sunday. So that's going to be awesome. Make sure we have been passing out invite cards, but the today, if you need to refill your six pack or you just need to grab a couple, they're going to be at the info table out in the foyer. And we're going to pass out some more next week to get ready for ice cream Sunday. Last thing I want to talk about is um, Unstoppable. Ladies, are you signed up for Unstoppable? Man, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. You don't want to miss it. Now, prices have already gone up, so you don't want to miss the next price break. So make sure if you haven't, if you haven't already signed up. And, and ladies, invite your friends because it is going to be an amazing, amazing time of who doesn't want to know how to be unstoppable in their life? I know I want to know what it means to be unstoppable so I can be unstoppable for his kingdom. Before I show you this video, though, if you didn't get your notes this morning, the ushers are waving at me because I forgot to do that. Would you just raise up your hand and they'll be happy to give you one of those. But while they're doing that, watch this video. weights have been holding on to you? What weights have been holding you down? The what if? He's like, come on, let me get you out of that stuff. Show how big a God I am. Show how, show how I can pull you out of that thing. That toughness that says, I am not going to give up. Good morning. Good morning, Father's house. Praise God. I want to welcome all of you this morning. I want to take just a moment and welcome those who are joining us on the World Wide Web. And in particular, I just want to throw a little shout out. I have two brothers and a sister that are sitting in the far northern reaches of Iowa waiting for the snow to show up. And I, asked, I was there last week and asked them if they would tune in so I could introduce our church to them. So welcome them all. Good to have you here. Praise God. Today, uh, by the way, has been declared a day of national prayer. That we might pray for those in Texas and uh, throughout our world, of course, but certainly in Texas because there's an awful lot of hurting people going on and they say it's going to get worse as, uh, as time progresses. Pastor Terry is uh, working with a pastor in Texas, a pastor of the Church of God, and he has some 200 churches that they are organizing as stations to be able to bring about uh, supplies and need uh, for those who are in need. We are going to support that group right now in the next three weeks. We're going to ask that as the offering is being received that you would, that you would drop into that offering whatever you can to support this effort. At the end of that three weeks, we will send that financial support to them. But that is not all we're going to do, but that's where we're going to start because they need some financial assistance. All right? Also, if you go on the Internet and go to the uh, Father's House website, it's thefathershouse.com, there's a, there's a very large button right there that simply says uh, Hurricane Harvey Relief. Push that button, you'll get additional information, and you also have a place in which you can assist uh, by providing some financial support. We need to get behind them. We live in a land that we, too, get threatened by oncoming storms, and we want to make sure that the world knows when we have a need that they'll step up. It's time for us to step up for them. Amen? Amen. It's a, you know, it, I don't know about you, but have you ever noticed that there seems to be this, this just this constant input of negative data into your life. Have you noticed that? Doesn't it seem like things are getting more desperate lately? I mean, they, they seem that way to me. I mean, every time I turn around, it's like there's something else that I have to look out for. I mean, bad news comes. If it isn't bad news, it's like it's no news at all. And, and it comes from every possible direction. We're not only informed anymore, we're actually being entertained. We are. How many remember, uh, what was his name, uh, uh, Walter Cronkite. Anybody remember him? 
He was an old guy that sat down with a bunch of paper and he told us about what was going on in the world. Well, our evening news has morphed more into a reality show. Now it's coming with all the hype and the drama and, you know. You get to a place where you start wondering, is, is there just any chances that I can just get a little relief? I mean, some place I can turn to, that'll assure me that I can, that things are going to get better. Well, I know when I get there, and I was there not long ago, I, I went to the only place, well, not the only place, but certainly the primary place in which most Christians turn lately. Television. Some of you are laughing, but if you notice, there's a lot of people who aren't. Uh-huh. I went there, and I thumbed through the various channels, and of course I went through the Christian channels, you know, just to find some place, someone that could give me some hope. And I found this guy, and he was able to share with me a way in which we could actually maybe find some way better to things to get things improved. And, and I liked it so much, I recorded it, and I'd like to show it to you. Uh, here, it's going to take a few minutes. I think you'll enjoy this. Welcome, brothers and sisters. I am so glad you've tuned in. This is truly an appointment of destiny. You see, by tuning in to the Live to Give Ministries, you have found the answer to your problems, the solution to your needs, the doorway to your will. I know that you have troubles. I know that. And you carry around with you the weight and the burdens of life. But I have, I want you to know this, I have been bestowed from on high the gift of receiving. Amen. And with that special divine power, I am able to see your needs, your hopes, and what will relieve you of your burdens. All of I have been called to take away the cause of your difficulties, the weight in which you carry around that which is burdening you down in your pocketbook, handbook, purse, yeah. wallet, bank yeah. account, yea, even those frequent fire miles. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, the right Reverend J.D., give well and his sweet missus. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we have been called to share the message that God wants you to be rich. Yes, he does. You yes. are not to be struggling no, not as if you were needy. No. But you are to live like live like the wealthy. Yes, you are. And what is it that the wealthy do? What is it the wealthy do? Sir? They give, they Jada. They give, they give. They live yes, to give. So it's time that you start living like the wealthy. Yes. Because you say God wants you to be yes, rich. Yes, Lord. It is written in the book of Second Hesitations, don't forsake it. If you can't take it, just fake it until you make it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> amen. That You know, that's oh. just such poetry of truth. You yes, know that, it is sister? J.W. Amen. Yes. Are you rich? No. No, you probably not. Do, do you want to be rich? Yes. Oh, no, no doubt. Then just fake it, brothers and sisters, and act like you're rich, and give, give, give. Yes, right now. Now. The Live to Give ministry has spared no expense to provide to you a way to communicate with me, with me personally, personally, one-on-one, -on -one, you and me. I want to talk with you, and I want to give you a word of prophecy that I am sure will bring profit to both of us. Yeah, both of us. Hallelujah. Now, here are... Uh, just a few of the letters yeah. we've received. Here are those letters. I would love to show there. Would you hand me one right yeah, there? Just hand me one there. Right I'd like to share with you. This is a letter from one of our our our, our, our partners, the our partners our that have come in and joined us. Yeah. Dear, dear Reverend, right Reverend, give well. Yes. I called your prosperity line, and you spoke a word of prosperity over me. Yes, you did. And the I very right. next day that I give. Yo, what I sent in what I could, and an email came my way. Oh, glory. Glory now. From a yes. widow 
of a wealthy banker in Madagascar, Africa. Africa? Africa. Oh, preach I'm, yeah, and all she wants from me is to open a simple little bank account so she can share her treasures her with me. Treasures Isn't that Lord, wonderful? I want to thank you, Reverend Give Wealth, because I am on my way to be rich. Oh, I'm oh, telling you, you, that is from Mrs. J.P. Gullible. I'm just yeah. so glad she just called. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, if, if, if you're in need, in need, if you are in desperation, desperation. if you desire riches beyond your oh, wildest dreams, wild. yeah. then call me now so that I might be able to speak over you an anointed word of wealth. Yeah. All you need to do is call the number. It's right at the bottom of your screen. 1-800-LIVE-GIVE. L-I-V-G-I-V-E. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Wait. What? What is it, J.W.? Wait, sister. What is it, honey? I, I feel down deep in my spirit oh. That, oh. that if your name, if your name begins with the letters N, K, D, F, J, W, S, L, M, or P. Oh, oh my. I, one of my treasures. Do you think it's a sign? I think it's a it sign. It could be a sign. Yes. Let go of the things you don't That's need. right. Let go of the wealth and send it our way. Yeah. If, if, if that if that letter begins with your name or any member of your family or any of your pets or pets you once had or any of the streets within your city, then I believe God has a double blessing for you. Double blessing right now. You reach out. You need to call in today at this very moment. Call right now before the anointing fades. Oh, I feel it fading. Do you feel, feel it fading? I feel. I think it's going. I do. I do. Yeah. Oh, call and, and and by the way, you don't want to miss out. In fact. In fact, just sister, sister, why don't you share this right here? You don't want them to miss Oh, yes. You do not want to miss this. We have a crusade. It's coming up, and it is called the Mo Money for Me Crusade. Now, you want to attend that crusade. It is going to be in the most luxurious bingo hall of the South Burning Spam Senior Center. Uh, 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 what now? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant South Birmingham, of course. That's what you want to get right now on your phone, and you want to register, don't you, darling? Sure do, baby. Yeah, yes, yeah, you do. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you that you need to call in right now so I can talk to you personally. I feel it in my spirit. You need to be calling right now. 1-800-L-I-V-G-I-V-E. -I -I Bless you. Now, listen. Listen here. Now, if you call in right now, I will send you. Do you have? There it is. I will send to you. The Coke can of cash. Right. The Coke can of cash. This has been anointed by my own very lips. These lips with that speak prophecy. You call in and I will see to it you right. get this. That's you put right. this under your pillow and you That's sleep right. on this tonight. Right. You fill that sucker with cash and send it back to me and you will get a double blessing. You will get right. a double blessing. Right. You call right now. Now remember, don't forget, call 1-800-L-I-V-G-I-V-E. Right and don't forget now. You want to live to give. You know, I, I think some of the reason we found that funny is it's very familiar, isn't it? And, you know, there, there's something funny about it because it's tragically true. It's also offensive. But there's just something that kind of it, it just kind of moves you to those places. And I, I want to share with you before I go any further that I'm not making any statement today at all that assumes that every single pastor or preacher or teacher or evangelist on television is a crook. That's not the case. Because there are some very godly, fine men and women proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and using the medium of television to do it. But there is a preponderance of heresy that's coming across that way. And we need to be ready for it in times of difficulty and stress because we are in such times. Do you understand that? Because there's an awful lot of deceptive liars that are willing to take advantage of desperate lives. So if I offended somebody, good. If I made you laugh, good. I personally found him very attractive, and that's why I put it up there. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to 20 let me read this to you this is a warning that comes to us and this isn't the first time I want you to know deception began back in the garden and it continues today and 2,000 years ago Matthew gave us a bit of a warning listen to this from the message Bible 
Be wary of false preachers who smile a lot, dripping with practice sincerity. Chances are that they are out to rip you off some way or other. Don't be impressed with charisma. Look for character. Who preachers are is the main thing, not so much what they say. Genuine, a genuine leader will never exploit your emotions or your pocketbook. These diseased trees with their bad apples are going to be chopped down and burned. Folks, when we live in an environment of despair and of want, that is a perfect place in which you will find birth those who will take advantage of those who are in need or those who have a want. And we live in such times. And these things are taking place. Because we have such a, a wide variety of ways to get information, we have just as many ways to be duped and drawn away for the resources that we have and our lives to be taken out of context of what God would have for us. We, uh, there's two, just one simple cornerstone that I want to apply here today. Something that if you walk away with nothing, walk away with this. There are two things you need to know in order to protect yourself. Okay, simply put, number one, the only thing that can protect us from being deceived is what? The truth. That is the only thing. There is nothing else. There is no one else that can protect you. And the only way to defend ourselves from deceivers is knowing the truth. See, here, here it is. When you came to church this morning, there's a good chance you locked the front door in your house to protect it. But what good would it be if you had the fanciest lock in the world on there, but you never read the instructions as to how to work it? You walked out and stuck that lock on the door, you left, and you hope when the burglar comes up, he'll take a look at the lock, be so impressed, and leave. One day, he's going to try that door. Guys, we have an instruction manual. God did not give this to us so that we could walk into the church on Sunday morning, stuff it under our arm, and let everybody know by seeing it that we're a member of the club. He gave this to us as a defensive weapon to be able to protect us from being deceived. And if you don't know the truth, you are a victim waiting to be had. And it's not just from silliness like that. It's from people who can speak, the, speak a lie with such eloquence and such charisma. He will, they will draw you in. We are sheep as much as we hate to think that. And if we are following the wrong shepherd, we will be led the wrong way. Do I hear an aha on that? I hear amen, yes, hallelujah. That's fine. As long as you get it, that's all that counts. You know, I wanted to know a little bit about these things, so I, I, I contacted a couple of them, not recently, this was a while back, and I told them I had an unspoken need. And they asked me for my address, and I gave them a post office box, uh, one that I was going to be closing shortly thereafter anyway. Yeah. And they asked me for my name, so I gave them my brother's name. Now, he didn't know that. In fact, he didn't know that until just now. <laughs> you are witnessing a family dispute. No, 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 not at all. But I did. I gave him my brother's name, and they started getting, you know, no sooner did I hang up the phone, and the amount of time it took me to hang up the phone and then to put a stamp on the envelope, I started getting letters. And I got all kinds of letters. I got letters with stuff. I, the, the stuff I got, I got prayer claws, miracle spring water, wonder manna, no evil oil, holy gloves, dirt from the Holy Land, wood from the cross, leaves from Gethsemane, soap that would wash away my sins, lotions that would assure me that I get healed. And it went on and on and on. I had, didn't I? I had two, you know those big baskets you get from the post office? Within a month, I had it filled to overflowing two of them. I mean, I had all kinds of stuff. And every one of those letters with every one of those little gifts assured me that one thing, it was an absolute promise, that all I needed to do is get that miracle to work was plant a little seed faith money. That's all I had to do. I read those letters thoroughly, and I can assure you of one thing that I didn't get. I never got in any of those letters a promise that my sins would be forgiven and that salvation would be mine through Christ Jesus. I never once, not in one of those letters, was I guaranteed that my guilt would be washed away and heaven was going to be my, my ultimate destiny. Never. They weren't there. It just wasn't there. But what I was promised was a kingdom here, filled with wealth and prosperity. All I had to do is just simply drop a little seed, Faith money. It'll prime the pump. You know what I mean? Peter tells us in the second 
book, the second letter he wrote, in chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, he says this, listen, there were false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bring swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into dispute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories that they have made up. I thought, wow, we've been warned for 2,000 years, people. You know, a Gallup poll was done not long ago, and it said, get this, the results of that poll said that 78%, more than two or three quarters of the American population, sees televangelists as, and I quote, untrustworthy, dishonest, and insincere. Well, well, you know, if, if that many people already see them as a problem, they obviously couldn't be doing very well, could they? Well, according to Carol Brooks's book, In Plain Sight, she said that the reported, mind you, reported income of many of these uh, evangelists that you see on television, and I'm not talking about the good ones, in, are in excess of multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Their home, their average home value, according to the public record, exceeds $3 million. I sincerely doubt whoever's stuffing those envelopes with whatever they have left and th putting it in the mail to them is sitting in the living room of a $3 million home. They're not. They're desperate. And desperation will drive us. But you know what the number one thing is that you find that will drive them, uh, those ministries? The number one thing they're looking for? The number one fish in the pond they're hooking for? Those who have want, moreover, than need. The number one reason, the number one reason that we fall for the lie is greed. That's the number one reason. Because let me ask you, here, here's a simple proof. Why don't they preach their prosperity message in Haiti or Nigeria or the West Indies, three of the greatest, most impoverished countries in the world? I'll tell you why they don't. Because they don't have anything they want. And the message that they preach wouldn't do any good there. So they do it where? Right here. They do it here because we have what they want and we want what they promise. And, and as tragic as it sounds, quite honestly, we find ourselves entrenched with just a, a desire for, of insatiable self-indulgence in this world. In Western society, we have more than we need and we need more than we've got. It just does. Second Timothy gives us a warning. And in Second Timothy, we are seeing Second Timothy being played out today, not only with this kind of thing, but we're being, it's played out throughout the church, throughout Christianity. Let me read this to you and listen to what this says in chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. You want to underline something? Underline, and then do it in your Bible and do it in your notes. Underline to put up, they will not put up with sound doctrine. Put up with. You know what you don't put up with? You don't put up with stuff that irritates you. You know, when your neighbor's uh, kid goes out and starts his garage band and he decides he's going to play at 3 in the morning. Huh? Whoa! Right? You don't put up. What a great way to put that. You don't put up with those kind of things. You don't put up with what gets in your face, what, what makes you uncomfortable. You don't put up with what you don't like. Do you? Isn't it amazing that today in the church, even the mainline denominations, we're no longer putting up with sound doctrine? We've chosen to go ahead to conform ourselves to what the world has found to be acceptable. Everything from methods and manners of lifestyle. We just simply have given up sound doctrine and chosen to go to teachers that will tickle our ears because we don't want to stand. Guys, I'm going to tell you something honestly. This book is the only book I have that is true. I have a lot of books. This one is true. And it says things I don't want to hear. It would be so nice if some of these things were kind of like gone and then I could just kind of kick back and live life well comfortably without offending anybody unfortunately God never called me to be at peace he told me to be an offense of truth and it's in this book and if you don't like everything that's in it don't read it but take note when you don't know the truth you will be subject to the lie heresy is this 
Heresy is simply this. Even though it's riches without risk, that's what we're seeking, heresy is a distortion of truth. That's all heresy is. Don't miss this. Heresy is not, let me put it another way, the devil is the father of lies, right? Satan is not a creator of anything. You with me? Nothing. He creates nothing. It's not a new idea. It's not a created new concept because he can't. What he does is he takes what's already there and distorts it. He simply takes truth and makes it a misrepresentation. And it's those little seeds of truth that are so dangerous. In Romans chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, it says, One final word of counsel, friends. Keep a sharp eye out for those who take bits and pieces of the teaching that you learned and then use them to make trouble. Give these people a wide berth. They have no intention of living for our Master Christ. They're only in this for what they can get out of it. And they aren't above using pious sweet talk to dupe unsuspecting innocents. It's that little measure of truth. There's truth in what they say. Just enough to be able to... They bait their hook. You with me? They're not out after somebody who doesn't believe. They're after the believers who think they got a handle on it. Whoop, they got you. And they just reel you in. That little, bit of, that little bit of truth is like an aspirin in a cesspool. It'll guarantee that you get your headache gone, but you don't want to drink it. So when you hear it, stay away from it. Make sense? And their message is on giving. And here's, that's, that's a problem because giving is fundamentally woven throughout every aspect of the Scripture. God loved you, He created you, and He gave you everything, including His own Son. He, he has prepared a place for you to give it to you. Not something you earned, something that was given to you. And by your submission to Him, you get it. It's an, it's an amazing opportunity. And i got to tell you, I can't give you this warning without also giving you some instruction. It's kind of like yelling fire, but never pointing to the exit. So let me give you six little things, three, three reasons to give and three ways not to. The first, it's found in Matthew, uh, the first three rather, the wrong reasons, is found in Matthew 6, 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Here it is. Number one, don't give to get. Don't give to get. You can't bribe God and you certainly aren't going to buy his attention. All right? Just don't do it. Your motive is all he's interested in, and your motive should be one thing, to please him. You don't give to please the pastor. You don't give to please the church. You don't get, you give to please him and him alone. Secondly, don't give out of fear. God won't get you if you don't give. He's not going to withhold his grace or a healing from you simply because you forgot or didn't drop something in the offering. You can't buy his attention, you can't buy his grace and mercy. Oh, and by the way, never support any ministry, any ministry. I don't care how good it sounds or how wonderful it appears that they are doing things for others. Don't support any ministry that gives you some guaranteed promises or fear in order to raise funds. Don't do it. You give what God puts upon your heart to those that you have taken the time to recognize. Understand, the responsibility of the gift is yours. Once it's given, it's not your responsibility to determine where it goes, so you better make sure it goes to the right place. And third, don't give to impress. God's not impressed. And if you feel, if, if there's even a, a little pitch within you that says, I want to give so that I can impress anybody, or so, I hope somebody sees this, then give secretly. In fact, I recommend you always, as Jesus said, don't let the right hand know what your left hand is doing. With one exception, one exception. Let your children watch you give. Let your children see you give sacrificially. Because then they can see what real commitment's all about and that you're willing to follow through with what you say and you trust God. Let them learn from you. Now let's look at the three right ways to give. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Give from your heart. Give from your heart is the first one. God's concerned about your heart. And by the way, God doesn't want to bankrupt you. Unless, of course, it'll improve you. Really. Think about it. 
Nicodemus, remember Nicodemus? Nicodemus went up on the roof and met Jesus, and Jesus said, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. This was a wealthy man, but Jesus never addressed his wealth. What he addressed was his religion. And basically what he says is, you got to give up your religion so you can have a relationship with me. And there was another young man who came to Jesus. And he had all kinds of wealth, but he also had his religion, his, his walk with God was working out pretty well. God, Jesus never approached him and said, you know what, give up. No, no, what he said is, you know what, you're doing really well, son, but unfortunately you got another God. And the God is your wealth, and give that up so you can follow me. He couldn't do that. You see, these two simply had to be impoverished in what was their God so that they become rich in the only true God there is. Secondly, give with commitment. In other words, when your heart tells you to give, follow through, do it. Anybody remember the names Ananias and Sapphira? Huh? These are two folks, if you're not aware of them, that promised that they would give something, and then they didn't, and God removed them rather dramatically as a teaching lesson for the church. All right? I want you to know, Ananias and Sapphira had no problem with giving. They had a problem with releasing. If they'd have had an escrow account when that property was sold and they never saw the money and it went right to the church, they'd have been just fine. But they actually had control. They had it in their hand, and then they had to give it up. That's why I don't suggest sometimes that we have these automatic accounts to pay our tithes, that we actually hold it in our hand and then give it, because then it's something that you have to give up. Okay? And third, give what you have, only what you have. Give only what you have. Don't, don't borrow to give. Don't trust Visa instead of God. Give what you have. Because, I, guys, if you are borrowing to give, then you're not giving, you're delaying. You with me? And when I'm talking about giving here, I'm not just talking about your money. Finance is important, of course. I mean, the air conditioning, the lights don't come on automatically. They have to be turned on by the, by the support of those who sit and enjoy their, the comfort of them. But it's not the finances, period. God doesn't care as much as, about your finances as he does your heart and your life. But when you give, everything you give, your time, your service, your finances, your, your love, everything, everything, you are a walking gift. And everything you do, whether it be in your wallet, your heart, or your head, goes to God. You with me here? You, when you walk outside those doors, there are people out there that's going to need to hear what you have to say. And they want to see whether or not you live it out. And what you give is the physical evidence of what you profess as a testimony. And if you want a conviction in any court, you've got to have both. You've got to have both a witness and the evidence. You have to be that evidence. So those are six simple things. But let me get back to the foundation that I wanted to lay in this message. It doesn't matter how wonderful somebody sounds or as good looking as that young guy was up there. Be careful with what they're saying so you know what the truth is because it can come out sounding really good and be really bad. There's a lot of good things, but there's not a lot of God things. You with me? Abraham Lincoln, during one of his debates, he was in a public park, and he was sitting back on the stool behind the, the podium, and the speaker was up there, his opponent, and he was speaking with such fine words. He was a very charismatic man, and he was speaking these words. He was, he was talking about slavery, and everything he said was a falsehood. But he was saying it with such eloquence, such clarity. The audience was applauding in every other word that he was saying. Lincoln never stood. He just watched. And when the man got done and sat down, and it was Lincoln's time. He stood up, and he looked at the audience for a moment, and then he turned and he looked at the man and he said, how many legs does a cow have? What? Uh, how many legs does a cow have? Well, I'm rather angry. He says, well, it has four, of course. Uh huh. What if you call the tail a leg? How many legs would the cow have? Well, <laughs> that's clear. A cow would have five legs. He turned back to the audience and he said, and that's where he's wrong. 
Because you can call a tail anything you want, but it's still a tail. There's no other leg there. You see, we can call things a lot of ways and define them wrongly. Be very, very cautious. In these end times, I believe in my heart the church is the only bastion of truth left and it's only going to be shared and seen not by some guy standing up here talking to people but the people he's talking to it's going to come from you and you alone and God is not interested as much in what you give as what you're willing to give you see the kingdom of heaven there's nothing in this book not not one single thing and I've read it thoroughly a number of times and I've been looking for the description of the banks and the barns and where all the stuff that I've given would be stored it's not in there because you see heaven is a storage place in which God chose to place you so he can hang out with you for eternity if you've never given your heart to Christ I want you to know something <laughs> you don't have the tools to fend off the deceiver because truth comes from the truth giver and the truth giver is in fact the truth and you need him to have residency in your life and you, and maybe you say well you know I, I believe but I, then I have my life you can't divide it that way Because what you believe in your mind is what will take root in your heart. You can't reject it with this and believe with this. It has to clear this before it gets here. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is in fact the Lord of your life? And does he rule every existence and every step that you take when you clear that door? If he does, praise God. If you're not so certain, but you think so, or you hope so, then we need to pray right now. I'm going to ask you to just bow your head for a moment. And I want you to think about this one simple thing. You can be deceived. You have been deceived at one time or another in your life. You can remember those times when somebody took advantage because of something you didn't know. The simple truth of the Christian message is this. It's not a matter of study. It's a matter of submission. Give your heart to Christ. Allow him to be the very foundation of your daily life, and you will find that you will be prepared to confront and to fight off anyone and anything and any message that comes your way that is not true. And then take the time to know what you believe. If you're here this morning and you've never given your heart to Christ, or maybe you have, but, well, things, a life have just gotten in the way. And you know it's time to come home. Or maybe, maybe you just need to uh, ask the Lord, could you help me out a little bit here, Lord? I've been walking a path that may not necessarily be yours. That's you. I'm just going to ask you, Just no one's looking around. We're not here to embarrass. We're just here to submit. I would ask you just to raise your hand. Let me, let me catch your hand. Yes. I see your hand. Yes, back over here. Yes, right here. Yeah, I see your hand, dear. Pray this prayer with me. Let's pray it together. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. And equip me, Lord, that I might be a warrior for you and not a, not a victim to another. Thank you, Lord, because it is you and you alone that I will serve. And all that I give in every aspect of my life belongs to you. And I ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And your church says, Amen. Amen. God is good.
He is good, good, good. We are going to we're going to receive our tithes and offerings right now. And if you if you raised your hand, by the way, and and you'd like to know, well, where do I go from this point on? What what, what takes place now? We have this little booklet called Now What. And if you want, when you go out in the back, oh, our ushers have them. Just raise your hand. We'll give them give one to you. It's a great little step, next step manual. Just take a look at that. And also on your connection card, if you would, let us know. Let us know uh, where your heart is and what God is doing through your life. And if today is the day that you made a commitment or a recommitment or you just have a need, Put it on that card so that we might pray with you. We have some wonderful prayer warriors in this church, and they want to gather around your needs and pray with you. And if you need a call, put a number down so we can call you. Now, in this offering, we're going to receive also monies that will go toward Texas. And if you've uh, written a check, let me just share this with you. If you've written a check or you put something in an envelope and you say, well, I wanted to do this and this, just indicate on there what you want, and we'll make sure it gets where it's supposed to go. Father, we thank you for the opportunity you give us to give. We ask now in the name of Jesus Christ that you multiply all that's provided and you give wisdom to the stewardship and the direction in which it goes. Be with those in Texas, Lord. Be with those, Lord, that so many have lost so much and help us to be support in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And let's stand and let's continue worship. And don't leave. I want to pray over you before you take off. God, I ask in your holy name that you will anoint each and every one here this morning. As they go outside that door, you will apply divine wisdom. Give protection to their minds, their bodies, their families. Return them to us safely, Lord God, and let them for these next days ahead to be a missionary for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Could walk.